answers are inside Yeah, I am the 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come, come on everyone, let's celebrate We are the children of the sun I can see you when I look into your eyes We are the same, we are light, and we are one Here now, hear my ancient prayer and sing along We are awakening as one Hi there, I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman, and I am here with you today with a very special show. It's kind of interesting, I really tried to get some of my different compadres to come on and do this show with me, but it just didn't seem to work out, and there's been these giant waves of energy coming into the planet that we're all feeling and getting kind of moved by. And it seems our internet was about out quite a bit today. And it just seems like the universe directed me as to when this was supposed to get done and how. So I've been telling the story a lot for the last couple of years. And I tell it over and over. But many things are coming into focus. Um, I hope that you can all hear me well. I'm working on trying to get a new uh, microphone but there's certain things I can't handle electronically. And um, hopefully if you can just turn the volume up, you'll be able to hear me just fine. And especially without me um, having to be compared with somebody else by the recording system. So anyway, um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is some scrolls that I was led to in Peru um, in 2014. And there were some very interesting, I began posting on Facebook that I was going and a friend of my friend Bill Ballard saw that I was posting named Amy Zaborak Palmer, um, who downloads these really cool little pictures that she's getting from the cosmos. And she said, boy, if you're going to Peru, you need to meet this guy, Angel. He was called at the time. I now learned his name is Alan and he's a great guy, has gotten to be a really good friend and is what I call a guardian of the scrolls. Um, these scrolls are pretty incredibly amazing. And what I have for you today is a slideshow with a bunch of images in it. And I'm going to tell the story as I show you the slideshow because it will be a lot easier than just listening to me. So give me just a second and I will share my screen. Oops, hit the wrong thing there. Hold on one second. And here we go. Screen sharing, and let me just pull this down and switch to how we're viewing it. Enter full screen. Okay, here we are. So I was on my way basically to go to Peru, Peru, and um, which is kind of on the left hand side of South America there. And so I was put in contact with this guy, Alan, or Angel, as he was called at the time. And it was suggested that he said, you've got to come and stay for seven days. And I was like, in Lima. And I was like, well, I'm not really a city person, so I'm not going to stay for seven days. And he was like, no, you really need to stay for seven days. And he knew what he was talking about. And of course, that's how the universe worked it out. So my initial um, meeting with him, I was kind of nervous because I was going to go to Lima to a strange city. Again, people who were supposed to come with me didn't come. And one who um, hadn't planned on coming until a week before ended up coming. And that was my friend Caroline. And she had gotten a hold of me and said, um, it, a week before I was leaving, she said, I want to go with you because I want to be in the field that you live in and because I, your guardian. I was like, okay, you know, don't argue with the universe. So Carolyn and I were good friends out in Colorado for many years and did a lot of outdoor adventure together. And you kind of bond with people when you do outdoor adventure. You, you know, you learn how you can count on each other and, and getting each other out of tough spots and into exciting, cool situations. So um, Caroline showed up, but she wasn't here right at first when I got there. So I 
I went to my favorite hostel in Lima, which is called Che Lagarto, which we'll see in a moment. But first of all, Alan and I decided we were going to meet at this museum. So I took a bus over to this museum because I was like, how am I going to meet some strange guy that I've never met? I have no, no idea what he's like, but he was like, you've got to see the scrolls. So I went over to this museum and got there and somehow he and I missed each other that day. So he rode the bus, I rode the bus, but I think I figured the wrong museum or something like that. So, you know, you end up walking through the streets part of the way really wonderful journey. So I went back to my hostel, which is called Che Lagarto. And Alan and I agreed that he would come to Che Lagarto and meet me. And you have to ring the buzzer and go upstairs. So he came upstairs, met me, and he speaks little English because he took Italian in school. And I speak little Spanish. So we sat there in Che Lagarto hostel. And there's all these great sayings on the walls if you've never stayed in hostels. Um, wonderful places, great young people. And we sat at a table together and we just sat using Google, Google Translator, typing back and forth. And what he explained to me was that he wanted me to come to a special place and see the scrolls. And he would come and pick me up on the bus and he would take me, um, come and pick me up. He would come on the bus. He would get me. I would meet him and we would walk back to the bus and then we would ride the bus to this other area of Lima and go see these scrolls. So this is where we sat. We sat at a table just like this, typing back and forth with each other. And we made an agreement that we would get together later in the week because the place with the scrolls was only open on Sundays. So this is me and Alan and he is just a wonderful um, person. I see him and the other guys that I met that I call scroll guardians as potentially having reincarnated from Tibet. Um, they all were born probably around 1960, which is right when this guy started channeling. Um, the guy, this is not Alan who did the channeling, but the guy I'm going to talk about who Antonio, who brought Luis Antonio, who brought the scrolls through. Um, and he um, he downloaded 4,000 of these scrolls. They were sent out to various countries. They were sent out to um, the Vatican, of course, thrown in the basement, you know, these countries all over the world. 2,000 of them out of 4,000 went to Tibet. And I believe he, he downloaded these from 1960 to 1978. And I just have this kind of inner belief that these guys – now, Alan tells me he's connected with ninth degree Pleiadians, which I think is probably true as well. Um, but I believe that they decided right at the time that Luis Antonio started transmitting this information that they would come in around the time he left. They would meet him around the time he left or overlap with him some so they could carry this forward. So it's really an amazing cosmology. And this is Amanda who came with me on the second trip in 2015. And we again went on adventures around Lima with Alan and we just have so much fun with him. We have so much fun together. And the scrolls are just an amazing, amazing adventure to be on. So I want to share them with all of you. So this is when um, Caroline and I first went in 2014 to this exhibition hall where the scrolls, where 60 of the scrolls are kept. And um, there's an overlay. There's a, a kind of a Catholic overlay. Um, the scrolls are literally called the message of the Alpha and Omega, the scrolls of the Lamb of God of the fifth book of Revelation. Now, if they're called that, I actually believe they really are that. Now, what cosmology do we follow? Do we follow the cosmology of Zachariah Sitchin, of Michael Tellinger, that much of our religious, you know, teachings over many thousands of years were basically downloaded to us by these groups of ETs who were kind of managing us moving ahead in, in different ways or being held back, whatever way you want to look at it. Um, but with the scrolls, they were downloaded in Spanish, and you kind of have to dig through this layer of um, sort of Catholic um, cosmology that's over the top of it. But they are a message, and they are a very special message, and they were deposited in Peru in Spanish, and I believe that they are for ground crew at this time, that they are kind of 
instructions and they contain a lot of really important key information. It's interesting between the time that I found them and now my awareness has grown so much um, and partially because of the cache plasma technology that's coming forward because you begin seeing it in the scrolls literally and um, we didn't quite have that as well in focus um, two years ago when I first found those. So this is what the exhibition hall looks like when you go in and what it says at the front of the exhibition hall there is these are the divine symbols of the millennium of peace the divine symbols of the millennium of peace and let's look and see what they are are the divine lamb of god i just directly translated the spanish up there but let's say they are the download of the lamb of god this the scrolls of the lamb of god this dispensation that i'm getting ready to share with you right now the divine flag of the third world is what it says or the flag of the new civilization and what's really interesting is swiss indo which is kind of over the global collateral funds that Kennedy was attempting to restore to humanity along with President Sukarno of Indonesia, part of the intention is that we will end up entering into a reorganized United Nations in order to bring forward um, these funds that can literally help balance out what's going on on the planet, make sure everyone has enough food, shelter, water, their basic needs met, education, and then we go on from there helping repair, you know, the harm, loss, and damage that's been done to the earth, um, et cetera. And I'll tell you a little bit more about what the scrolls say about this in a little bit. So the third symbol is the divine silver ships, or guess what, the UFOs, which we have had tons of disclosure done on in the last couple of years as well. Um, so in so I'm not going to get into all these different segments right this second, but so the three symbols, the divine symbols of the millennium of peace are the scrolls of the Lamb of God, the United Nations emerging as the flag of the new civilization or the new world. But that means a restructured United Nations that is for the service and the well-being of all of humanity and potentially with global humanitarian funds flowing through that. And then the divine silver ships, which is the galactic vessels of our galactic brethren who I believe left us this message. So there's my friend Caroline who showed up by the time I came to the exhibition hall, she showed up and traveled across town with me with Alan and um, he dropped us off on Sunday and let us go in and check out this amazing place. I mean, look at that. The, there's, there's a lot of really great newspaper clippings in this place of all the information that was coming out on UFOs during this time period. And um, this has been a really an activator for a very small group of people probably. But in Peru, you know, it, it has followers in probably various places in South America. So again, these are these pictures up close, the lamb, of God, the flag of the United Nations, and the UFOs. <laughs> and there is Luis Antonio Soto Romero, and he is the gentleman who was born in Chile, and from the time he was a little boy, he could literally hear this galactic voice, or they call it the, the voice of Father Jehovah, talking to him. And by the time he was seven, he was asked to make a decision. Would he like to um, spend his life communicating this information from the Father Jehovah or our galactic brethren, um, whatever we want to determine this is as we get to know this material, um, or would he, did he want to just go down the regular path? And he, of course, I mean, this was such a, it filled him up and he was, he was, he was filled with light and joy from being in contact with this voice, this information, this energy. And by the time he was 12, he started writing things and drawing pictures. And by the time he was 31, he became a direct channel for this galactic information. And 
so from 19 and so he was born in Chile, grew up there, and then he went to Peru and he lived with another Antonio in Peru. And there were other people who took him in and he did this work of downloading these scrolls. There were brothers who hung out with him and spent time with him, brothers and sisters um, who supported him doing this work. A scroll is as big as a blueprint, as we'll see in a little bit, and they were downloaded onto this parchment paper. And he literally, it was like doing automatic writing, like he was a printer for Galactic Mind, and he would do large segments of these scrolls that have 10,000 words on them, perfectly straight lines, no mistakes, in 12 minutes. So, um, so he did this, he downloaded, he intended to download 10,000 scrolls. It was told there were 10,000 of them, but he only downloaded 4,000 in over, I believe it's 1960 to 1978. I could be a little off on those numbers, but I believe that's approximately it. And, um, and then by 1990, he achieved the rainbow body, which a number, I think 160 Tibetan monks have. So what does that mean? Does that mean he dissipated into the light? Does that mean he was picked up by a spaceship? Does that mean um, he, tra he was transfigured? And, and I think we have a number of stories throughout history that talk about this kind of transfiguration. So pretty amazing, you know, very regular guy, but who came in to be the voice of this higher mind, higher consciousness. So these are just some of the pictures that are up around the exhibition hall. And it's really cool. There's Caroline on the left. And we showed up at this place and neither one of us were really good at speaking Spanish. And this lady uh, showed up. I can't remember her name. I'm sure Caroline would. Um, but she showed up and she said, oh yeah, you know, and it's interesting because there's some interesting things on even what was downloaded to Joseph Smith of the Mormons. Um, and if you go back and look at uh, Stitchin's writings on the clay tablets and Michael Tellinger's work, you will see that that's part of this galactic thread, this thread of galactic information. So this woman is a Mormon. She showed up this day and she said, I've never been here before. I was told to come here today. And yes, I will translate for you. So she translated for us and she was wonderful. She had a lot of energy and enthusiasm and she would ask the questions we wanted her to ask. So I asked her to go ask the gentleman at the desk if they had known the guy who wrote the scrolls. And they said, no, but we know somebody else. And they picked up the phone and within about 12 minutes, this gray haired gentleman shows up at the door with guess what? A whole nother roll of scrolls on parchment under his arm. Now, if this wasn't an exciting turn of events, so this is our lady who's our translator, and this is Luis Antonio, who is called the Lamb of God. He's called, it's the divine revelation of the Alpha and Omega. He's a really wonderful, bright, you can just feel his heart coming through. So these are just some other random pictures. Um, and I think, you know, interest in UFOs got really activated by this whole cosmology down there. Um, this says, I am the alpha, which is masculine. Um, it says, yo soy el, el alpha y la omega. I am the alpha, masculine, and the omega, feminine. The prince and the end of all life. I am the light the life, the truth, and the way. And what are the symbols of this message of the Alpha and Omega? It is the flying saucers or the UFOs, the Lamb of God, and a new civilization emerging under the flag of a reorganized United Nations. So this is the gentleman, his name is also Antonio. And there's a little conflict on all of this because he holds about 80 of these scrolls. There are 60 of them up in the um, exhibition hall that can be gone in and looked at every Sunday. And then there's a few groups of brothers and sisters who get copies made of the scrolls and they work on getting them out to the world and they publish books and they run vegetarian restaurants because the scrolls say, we will not kill animals to eat in the new earth. And um, so this is 
um, really beautiful. This man came right away when they called him and they, he said, they said, there's an author here and she would love to talk to you. And so he brought the scrolls and he talked to us for a couple of hours with this wonderful lady translating. And so what we're going to see here in this first wave of these is the different scrolls going by, and then we'll get a closer look at some of the ones that are up on the walls. At the time, I was not really taking pictures. I was just overwhelmed. I was trying to figure out what are these scrolls, and how was it that I was brought here, and how amazing is all of this? And Caroline and I were just traveling, and we were just kind of taking the next step into our adventure, and we just you know, I, I just didn't realize the depth of the meaning of these when I first got there. So I wasn't like taking pictures to just document everything perfectly, but it's kind of an overview documentation at this point. So these guys are having a conversation. She asks some questions. He tells her things, and then she's translating to us. And you'll notice each one of these each one of these scrolls has different pictures on it. The guys that ran the place moved their tables back and they made space for this and um, set up a special table for him to put the scrolls on. This was a pretty cool event that this happened. Here's Caroline having fun taking pictures. So we kind of just stood there with him and went through one scroll after another. If you keep watching the scrolls as they go by, you'll start seeing these amazing pictures. And they definitely have a lot of fly, flying saucers, UFO activities, and movements of energy, energy flowing from different um, bodies, different solar bodies, different planetary bodies, um, spaceships, um, you know, smaller ones coming out of bigger ones, possibly a wormhole that was gone through from a sun. And these are just amazing. And they go on and on. And down in the lower right, you can see the little people in the spaceship. And they're kind of up in the middle as well. And then what are we looking at there? Two suns. And so many of us, I think what's going to happen as we get to know these scrolls, I feel like this was given to me. And the guys who know me in Peru have told me over and over, Carrie, you've got to start getting these out. And they kind of know that because of how I met them, and I'll tell a little more of that story in a little bit, um, they feel that I was sort of like delegated by the universe kind of to be the one to bring these forward. And it's probably why I'm sitting here doing this video with you by myself tonight, um, because there is something in this energy that I need to transmit, and I'm just a carrier of it. I'm just here to bring it forward. But I think as many of us who are involved both with cash energy, um, with the global collateral funds, with understanding po uh, planetary changes. I think all of us are going to see things, or, you know, the whole UFO cosmology. I think we're all going to start seeing things in these pictures and go, wow, look at that. I mean, just wow, look at that. And so you'll really like it. You can, um, if you're watching this video, you'll be able to stop it and um, look at different pictures. And I encourage you to do that. Um, I'm doing the best. Basically, what we're doing right now is Alan is helping me work on a page on my 21st Century Superhuman website. We're working on several pages where we're actually putting up all these pictures and a bunch of the writing. And um, it's also possible to go onto their Spanish websites and read 230 of the scrolls, which are up online, which are not included in this 80 that I'm showing you here. And um, I'm going to take a group back in the fall, and we're going to go do some documentation on these 80 and see if we can get them in a position that we can access what's in them. And I believe they contain, look at this, we're looking at two suns, we're looking at two earths. What are we looking at there? Um, and I think we're, and look at the flying saucer underneath. Um, I think we're looking at information in these 80 that may be even beyond the 230 that are there. And it, some people don't like it that this gentleman has some of the scrolls at his home, but I believe that they were left with him by Luis Antonio. And he, they, he may have told him, hey, these are for later release, you know, um, release the earlier ones and let people begin learning this stuff and then release these others. I mean, what are we seeing here? 
And a lot of this is in our alternative news, our alternative um, weather, our alternative views of the planet and um, what's going on in the sun right now. What is that? A whole bunch of little spaceships coming to the earth or going from the earth, coming to the earth. Very cool picture. And there is Mr. Antonio with me and his roll of scrolls. So now we're going to go and look at the scrolls um, that are up in this exhibition hall in Lince, which is a subdivision area of Lima. And um, it's, it's kind of a journey to get there on the bus, and you don't want to go through all areas of Lima by yourself. Um, it's good to go with a group and good to go with someone who knows the way that they're going. Whoops. So I've kind of posted these with a, a close-up of the images and then what it looks like with the writing on the scroll as well. And this one I understand is some kind of a key. So I'm not sure what kind of a key, but I think if many of us put our heads together and begin solving these together, we're going to come out with some pretty cool stories and scientific information. So that's what the whole scroll looks like. And here's another one. Wormholes, you know, transiting dimensions of space, um, the grid. What are we seeing here? Spaceships coming and coming and sending these beams to Earth. I mean, we're getting into a, um, you know, I'll leave you guys to come up with your own explanations. But I've spent a lot of time looking at these. Now, if you can imagine, this writing is something that, he, Luis Antonio Romero did, he did it literally by hand. I mean, can you imagine? It looks literally like a printer did it. Look at this. This is a, bu a bunch of galactic beings. They've even got little emblems on the back, on their backs, and they're looking at Earth kind of up on a, on a screen there. Um, and these are all covered with plastic. Um, I'd like to go back and actually get, you know, better copies of them. But for right now, this is something for us to look at and to maybe get an idea of what this is all about and what was being transmitted to us. You know, so after the, the nuclear weapons, the atomic bombs were set off in World War II, um, I believe even some early star seeds started coming in World War I and World War II. They didn't want us to destroy ourselves. Um, the solar system, the dimensions beyond. So they began, you know, they realized we were going to shoot them out of the sky and they said, well, let's start seeding the place. Let's start finding people that we can transmit information through. So isn't this amazing? So Antonio Ramirez, um, Luis Antonio wrote all these and he drew the pictures. Look at the little guys in the spaceships. Really cool. So what's going on here? I'm going to do some more shows on these with some of my friends who are pretty telepathic and psychic and have information on the different technologies. And um, we'll start kind of batting them around some ideas. If anybody's really interested, you can contact me on Facebook, Carrie Kira Star Ellis, and uh, if you feel like you've got something to say about this. So there we have that, um, the flag of the new world, the beams coming out of the spaceship that I'm sure are for the good. I'm sure they're for the good because let me just tell you a little bit, I've spent hours and hours and hours up all night reading on these websites, which we'll show at the end, alphaeomega.com and alphaeomega.pe. And you can read them because the scrolls are in Spanish and they're going to get translated by Google Translator. You know, if you're, if you do it in uh, Google and, um, or Google Chrome is what I use. And so they're, they're getting translated, but it's kind of a rough translation. But if you sit there and you read them through over and over and over, you keep getting what the message is. And the message is basically that 
humanity has established this really materialistic civilization. They call it the strange culture of gold. And they say, if anyone has hurt anyone else or published, punished anyone else or suppressed anyone else with the rules of the strange culture of gold, they shall be, you know, they shall be gone. They shall be, you know, it talks about it in some of the old Catholic language. So I think you can kind of go beyond that. I've had some neat people translate some of these for me, which will be on my website um, under the scrolls. Um, but the, so they talk about the strange cultural of gold and how it will disintegrate and we will build a new civilization founded in love and it will be under the flag of the reorganized United Nations. Um, they talk about the flying saucers and how they literally fly with consciousness. Um, I'll read a couple of things when I get out of the screen sharing um, that Alan shared with me that have to do with particles. They talk about the cherubs of matter, which are like the smallest particles of matter. Um, they're amazing and really interesting. And, but the theme is that we are going to shift how we're running our civilization. So again, that's the scroll on the, the flag of the new United Nations. Interesting. These are just fascinating and there's so much. If you just sit and look at them with the knowledge that we now have and begin seeing what they're sharing with us through this and, you know, what this guy was able to download through these basically simple drawings. Um, this is on the Nazca lines and um, it talks about that and the people who came from the yellow planet who put these there. And again, interesting, the energy going from each person and going from each person in different ways or each galactic being into these collective starships when you like to read that one and see what it says this one each one of them has a different um energy coming out of their you know they're sending their energy to this vehicle whatever it is and each one is sending out kind of slightly different messages it's really fun i just love these i think they're just amazing and I'm so excited that I kind of got this pressure from the universe and it just said you have got to do this and you've got to do this now these guys have been bugging me to get it out and I just didn't have any idea how and finally I just realized the other day put out a video okay um, and it's come through I've literally had people just asking me from all sides even just in the last couple of weeks you know can you get this to me in a way that I can look at it and um, are we looking at the great pyramids here? You know, in ancient Egypt, they would weigh your life against a feather and they would weigh your life against a feather, you know, if you were dealing in blame, fear, judgment, hostility, and control, or was your life as light as a feather? Were you living in love? And that's what, when you went to the other side, that's what your life would be weighed against. Um, I'm, I'm not sure everything it says on this scroll, but that's my personal thing that I get out of it. And the UFOs were there too. <laughs> and this is, I would guess this is an atomic bomb going off and um, they're kind of showing how it's affecting the different dimensions and things. You don't want to do that anymore. Or other similar, you know, destructive technologies. And there is the Lamb of God, the spaceship potentially maybe coming from the sun or appearing on the earth. Not sure what this all means, but um, you have to kind of delve into each scroll and read them and they're just amazing. And we've got the spiral of course, and you know, the spiral is sending out its energy and to the earth. Just amazing, amazing, amazing. I would call that our sun and our earth and probably some, you know, um, transportation passageways. Beautiful. It actually looks like a cash coil down in the lower left. And, you know, these ways of bringing in plasma energy, I think those who are using plasma energy who have, a, have the more creative minds, you could look at these and begin 
seeing all kinds of things. And again, we've got the grid pattern. That's what that whole scroll looks like. And there's this scroll that has these different figures on it and explanations for them. So anybody who's like just totally stoked on this, if you want to come to Peru with us, I think November is going to be the time I'm going to be able to do it. And we'll make a trip back to Peru and go spend some time with these scrolls. I'd like to bring some people who understand plasma energy and understand the science. I'd like to bring some good Spanish speaking, you know, people who are good at Spanish and English and some people who are like rocking on UFOs. And I think we could, really um, kind of bring forth major light from what was left us here or what was transmitted to us. And you can see the two little people in the craft there. That's an interesting one. Hmm. You know, I mean, as much as I've delved into these, th th there's so much more to read. It, like each one of these scrolls in and of itself is like a book. So, and just think, I mean, I've watched all of us around the world um, with this emerging knowledge soup that we're in the middle of. Thank goodness because of the inner book, the internet, the inner book, the inner, <laughs> the inner book. Yeah, the inner book, what all of us are learning on the inside, Facebook. Um, how we've been able to transmit information to one another and these tools that we have. So we've really got this collective going around the world that's understanding these new waves of science, that's understanding kind of the change that's happening in our cosmos. And how do we relate to that? And how do we better understand it? And how do we take this mega evolutionary leap into the next phase of our own existence as a healthy, you know, civilization that is left behind in its distant past harm loss and damage so we don't have to be doing those things anymore get a woman she looks like she's got something in her tummy there and she's standing on the grid so what is this beautiful picture and there's the whole scroll <laughs> you've got to just read each one to know what they say and um, I don't know them all by heart yet but and so here's a man and he's standing on two different colors of waves and got this stuff coming through his center and the spiral behind him that one's pretty cool <laughs> So I'm just going to zip through the rest of these and just let you guys get a glimpse. That's what I, I did this, you know, so everybody could watch this because video seems to be an easy way to pick things up. But just get a glimpse of, you know, what we're looking at here, an idea. Um, so there were 4,000 of these scrolls. Here's that flag again. They went out to, um, they went out, many of them went out to the world and there's only about, there's 230 of them online and I think there's 80 that the other gentleman has. So 230 of them you can read online at alphaeomega.pe and there's also a .com site and they're run by two different groups kind of. So there's that beautiful flag of a new earth founded in love. And this is their little restaurant upstairs at the exhibition hall. And they have all these people who are really dedicated and they're up there making this wonderful vegetarian food. And you go up and give, you know, a few dollars for your meal to help support the place. And um, really fun. Yummy. I think they had desserts over there. There's Caroline talking to the guy and that little ladder going out. So there's me and um, Amanda and Alan so that was last year in 2015 and um, we had just been walking all over downtown Lima and we went to a couple of these different restaurants and we went and met this special lady who had brought me another set of scrolls I think I gave her the money so that they could get the copies made but um, they don't charge anything for doing anything they're all they're like they're like monks or you know I call them the guardians you know they're the guardians of this cosmology so um, 
we ended up going from Lima to Caroline and I went from Lima to Cusco and I did also with Amanda's group but um, the way that this original story went in 2014 we went from Lima to Cusco and Caroline and I had actually gotten us sick we went to um, we went to uh, Lake Titicaca on the way there and she had eaten she was kind of eating places she probably shouldn't have been and um, she, she had dysentery and then both of us were really used to living at high elevations but she kind of got you know uncomfortable because she was getting kind of dehydrated so um, she wasn't really feeling well so we ended up coming back to Cusco and went into the hostel we were going to stay in and I had checked out this little hostel next door and she was going to go to the med center and she said oh why don't you move us over to the hostel next door um, because the hostel next you were kind of drawn to it and um, and I've got to leave anyway you might as well go just get you know a room for you and until I get back and uh, and I went well you know she's my guardian I guess I'll do what she says so I walk up to this ho hostel and I have you can see the role behind these guy. this guy this guy's name is Atipak and he's um, he's a he's part Quechua Quechuan which is the native um, uh, the native people kind of like the native of the, the the country and I had the roll of scrolls over my shoulder and I walked up and he said what's in the roll I said the scrolls of the Lamb of God he said I know those scrolls I've been studying them for 20 years and um, and so he and I became fast friends and Atipak speaks a number of languages he's literally running for president of Peru right now trying to move out the corruption that's there but he said and we know since you showed up here to meet me with those scrolls and nobody even told you I was here we know that you are being moved by the hand of God and I need to take you to meet Joel who's down at the shaman vegan restaurant downtown so Atipak has continued to be a wonderful friend he's kind of a seer um, I call him another reincarnated Tibetan monk who came to carry this cosmology forward in the Americas in this lifetime and there's me and Atipak sitting in this little hostel and we would sit and have chats every day and he'd tell me really amazing stories so this is downtown Cusco and we head down there and go to the shaman vegan restaurant um, that is Joelle with me and Joelle is probably one of the highest frequency people I have ever met on the planet he is very calm and clear I totally consider that he probably was in Tibet last lifetime and came in to be a guardian of the scrolls and this is his brother's restaurant his brother is an Andean shaman um, and he and I've gotten to know he and his wife and they do adventures up into the mountains and while Joel is really involved with um, the scrolls so Joel took me into the back room and started showing me the paintings that he had done he had overlapped um uh luis antonio who the, who's called the lamb of god or the alpha and omega who downloaded these scrolls um he overlapped him for 10 years so he worked with him for 10 years and during that time joel started having visions and dreams and he was an amazing artist and so he started painting what he was seeing and so he started showing me he just had a notebook of these paintings he had done and I'm looking at the notebook going Joel we've had disclosure people want to see what you've painted here and so so he and I discussed it and I said I said let me help you publish these paintings in a book on um, Kindle and on Amazon and four days later he had it made into a book he's a graphic designer he's amazing he took words out of the scrolls in English and put them with the images that he had drawn but let's look at some of the images it's really cool this book is called silver vessels you can buy it for a dollar ninety nine on Amazon it's Alpha and Omega translated and illustrated paintings by he goes by Joel but his um, official name is Daniel Aravalo visionary artist revelation dreams inspiration look at that beautiful crystal city with flying saucers anybody seen things like this in their visions I think many of us have so that's it on Kindle one ninety nine I dollar ninety nine I recommend you grab a copy and I actually wrote the introduction to it 
um, to help explain what the book was about. So this is one of his beautiful paintings. And this is about the celestial science. I put a few of these words just to give you guys an idea. Um, these are words from the scrolls. Um, this is from The Divine Origin of the Human Flesh by the Alpha and Omega. The microscopic pores of the flesh, they know that they improve more in proportion to the spirit's progress, to which they see like an immense sun. For the microscopic pores and cells of the human body and of all the species live microscopic dimensions, live microscopic dimensions, and they have in them galaxies and infinite cosmos. They also see starry nights, just as the human spirit sees them in its own dimension. What every spirit feels is felt by its pores and microscopic cells too. What is up above is the same as is down below, which means that the microscopic pores and cells see their own eternity in the human spirit, just as the human spirits live with hope, with their minds fixed in heaven, fixed upwards. So this picture is, he, he calls this chapter, Suns and Worlds. Um, and this is from the scroll called um, Origin of the Silver Vessels by the Alpha and Omega. And I think we all have different ideas in our minds right now who the Alpha and Omega might be, but I guess translate that for yourself. Um, the crew of the silvery vessels are great in power. They can visit suns and worlds. No distance is a problem to them, for they are telepathic creatures. Without moving from where they are, they communicate with any point of the universe. All roles mark Peru. So the scrolls tell that this thing is going to happen in Peru. Truly, I tell you, revolutionaries of the world, which the Peruvian flock, the greatest revolution of the world arises, an award that was attended for the Chilean flock. So this one is called worlds, cherubs. Cherubs are like the smallest particles of matter. The cherubs with which these vessels are built, your virtues also have them, and your body of flesh, even your size and excrements. Everything that your mind can imagine in all your existences is composed by the cherubs of the Father Jehovah. The knowledge of this universal law shall mark a new epoch on earth, an epoch announced through centuries and centuries in the scriptures, an epoch which shall annul everything that men have made, for the new world is initiated by lovingly ordering the cherubs of nature. And um, they have these conferences down there. Um, I may see if it's possible for us to go to the one in November. Um, they have different ones in Peru. And um, I don't think they're real big, um, but they're kind of to keep introducing this information to people. Um, so the places that you can learn about the scrolls, alphaeomega.pe, alphaeomega.com. Um, we will have upcoming Peru trips to see the scrolls. Um, like I said, November is, I think, what I've figured out. And you can go to our 21stCenturySuperhuman.com travel or 21stCenturySuperhuman.com and click on scrolls. Um, I think that's the last slide. And let me get out of screen sharing here. And I'm kind of losing my light also. Hey, there you guys are. Okay, I think because I'm losing my light, I'm going to go ahead. But um, And it's probably just normal that I look kind of fuzzy, right, after reading this information. Here, turn the light on. Maybe you can see me better. Hey, hi there. Um, anyway, sorry about getting so dark. Um, so the scrolls are amazingly exciting and awesome and cool. I look forward to sharing more with all of you guys about them. And I believe Alan in Peru, we're going to try and get him on the show. I've got a guy who just showed up on my Facebook who said, I'd like to help you do some translations. So I'm really excited about working with him. And um, I think this is a big thing. If anybody wants to participate or contribute, um, I, you can always comment under this video. You can comment under um, under things on my Facebook or my group, um, 21stCenturySuperhuman.com Quantum Lifestyle on Facebook. Um, I just want to thank you all so much for being here. 
and for being for all of us being here together at this really amazing time on planet earth where we are literally living the shift of the ages and sometimes we get discouraged and sometimes we wonder how we're going to get through it all or how we're going to like bridge the gap to the next level and i just know there's no question we're going to make it in fact it's already done in you know in some timelines so we need to just step into that knowing remember to breathe and smile remember we are emerging a new civilization founded in love and i just look forward to hanging out with all of you on the path and um, many blessings to everyone, and we'll see you in the next video. Much love. Many blessings. Ciao. Adios.